Welcome back. In our What is vSAN video, we just lightly brush the surface on our disk configurations. For this video, we're going to dive deeper into those topics. We're going to start off by talking about our disk groups. vSAN supports a maximum of 40 disks per each ESXi host, whether it's our traditional or standard model, our two node configuration, or our stretch cluster. And we have something we call disk groups. That's how we organize all 40 of those disks. We can have a maximum of five disk groups per each ESXi host, which means we have a maximum of eight disks per each disk group. But going back to that cache capacity, we have a maximum of one cache disk per disk group and a maximum of seven capacity disks per disk group. So said in another way, we support a maximum of five cache disks and up to 35 capacity disks. Alternatively, we could have a single disk group with one cache disk and one capacity disk, we could have two disk groups, three disk groups, four disk groups, five disk groups, going to like everything now at this point, with a range of different capacity disks in there, as long as they all have one cache disk. And vSAN doesn't have to be consistent across all the nodes, although we do recommend it and it is a best practice. And that's one of those situations where, let's say we're doing a tech refresh and we no longer can get 600 gig drives. We have 800 gig drives now. We totally support it, not a big deal. As long as we take that into account we're starting to plan out our failures if one were to happen, or if we were to put a host in maintenance mode. Let's start off by talking about our all flash configuration. And one more point I want to mention, since we're just talking about consistency, if I choose all flash or if I choose hybrid, it needs to be consistent across all of our nodes. I can't have two nodes that are all flash and two nodes that are hybrid. It needs to be consistent across all of them. Okay, so let's talk about our cache disks. In an all flash environment, we use that cache disk 100% for writes. So all the writes that are coming from that VM are hitting that cache disk first. Then as our cache disk starts filling up, we start destaging the data down to our capacity tier. And we start that at about the 30% watermark. Let me say that again, because I feel like I went through a little fast. We started at the 30% watermark. So if I've got a 100 gig disk, I know it's really small, but easy math. At 30 gigs, we would start destaging. Not because we have to, but we say, we might get a bunch of writes in the future so why don't we pr be proactive and start moving that data down instead? Then for reads, we just return that block of data back directly from our capacity tier. Since we've got all SSDs or all MMEs, we just return it back straight from the capacity tier. One of the scenarios you might be thinking about is what happens if that block of data is in our cache disk and our write tier, but hasn't been destaged down to capacity tier. You said earlier that we return blocks of data from our capacity tier for read purposes. In that situation, vSAN would say, oh, I see this block of data is located here in the right tier in our cache disk. I'll just send it directly back from our cache disk. Not a big deal. Switching gears and talking about our hybrid model next. We do things slightly differently because we want to maximize that cache disk as much as possible since it's an SSD or NVMe and then take advantage of those spinning disks for those capacity purposes. For our cache disk, we do a 70-30 split. Now this is a allocation of storage. This isn't an actual partition. So if I use some kind of tool to look at the partitions on our disks, we wouldn't see a physical partition itself. This is just a logical allocation of space. And so we do a 70-30 split, 70% 70 used for reads and 30% used for writes. And for a write here, we'll start there first. As the VMs need to write a block of data, it'll hit that write section first then as it fills up, we'll start destaging our data down to our capacity disk where we have those spinning disks. And then for read purposes, if our VM needs to read a block of data, it'll go to that 70% and pull that block of data back. But vSAN likes to keep that read tier nice and full with as many blocks as possible. And if it comes to a situation where you try to pull that block of data up and that read allocation is full, we'll look and say, which is the oldest block of data? I'm gonna evict it so I can put this new block of data in there instead. And for our cache disk in a hybrid environment, it is really important we size it correctly to make sure it works for your environment. And we have a tool called the VM Sizer that allows you to go through and plug in all the different numbers to figure out what is the appropriate size for your environment. The last topic for this video will be failure scenarios. And we'll talk about two different types of failure scenarios. The first is a cache disk failure, and the second one is a capacity disk failure. So let's start off and talk about our cache disk failure first. Regardless of what type of configuration you run, 
where that's all flash, all flash with deduplication compression, all flash with compression only, or hybrid, the results are the same. If I have a cache disk that fails, I lose the entire disk group. We can think of the cache disk like the head of a snake or the head of your favorite animal. In that case, all the data passes through it. Well, if I lose that head, everything else is behind it, we also lose. And this is where vSAN storage policies come into play, where how it protects your data and how it heals your data. When we talk about storage policies, we'll go more into how vSAN takes advantage of that. Let's talk about our second failure, which is a capacity disk failure. In a capacity disk failure, it really depends on what configuration you have. Do you have all flash, all flash with compression only, or hybrid? In that situation, let's say on host one, our capacity disk two failed. In that case, we could take advantage of our storage policies that can protect against anywhere from one failure all the way up to three failures in the environment. We would pull that data off from somewhere else and we put it on another healthy disk. There's one configuration I didn't mention, which is all flash with deduplication and compression. This is one of our space savings types configurations, but there's a caveat you should be aware of. For every one of our blocks of data that comes into the capacity tier, we calculate a SHA-1 hash against it. We then save it into a hash map. And then once you figure it out, is it a unique block of data or not? We record the block's location into a translation map. And since I spread that across all of the capacity disks in that specific disk group, if I was to lose one of the capacity disks, then I'll lose part of the map. And as a result, we fail the entire disk group at that point. Wrapping up this video, we start off by talking about our disk groups. How vSAN supports a maximum of five disk groups per each vSAN node. Then how we allocate cache disks and capacity disks into those disk groups. We then dove further into our disk groups and looked at our cache and capacity tier. How we use them for reads and for writes, depending if you're a hybrid model or an all flash model. We then finished off by talking about failure scenarios. What happens if I have a failure situation and a cache disk or a capacity disk? I hope you found this video informative. I'd like to thank you for watching.